Well, greetings, everybody. Coming to you back at you again, talking about misused and misquoted scriptures in the Bible. Last time I dropped a video talking about Luke 6.38, where it says, Given it shall be given. And we talked about, just basically paraphrasing, how that's really a uh, reaping what you sow passage. It's a, you know, if you, if you sow one thing, you'll reap another thing. And then it goes on to say in Luke, Luke 6.41, it goes on to say, you know, uh, judge not and you won't be judged. Condemn not and you won't be condemned. Which is basically what I'm going to talk to you today about Matthew 7. This is one of the most misused, misquoted verses in the Bible. Because there's a lot of Christians out there and a lot of people out there that believe that we're not allowed or we're not supposed to judge. That is actually not what's being said there. If you go to Luke 6.41, it says, Judge not and you won't be judged. But however, it doesn't say that you can't. There's no prohibition there that says you can't. And we're going to see in Matthew 7, as it can, Jesus continues on with that, why it doesn't say that we can't judge. And we're also going to see as a church leader in 1 Corinthians 5, the Apostle Paul rebuked a, a believer who was in sin, and he also rebuked the church for not rebuking him. Okay, so as leaders, we're supposed to judge sin in the church, and we're supposed to deal with sin and make people accountable in the church. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you real quick about that. But let's go to Matthew 7 real quick. Let's just read it. It says, do not judge, or you too will be judged. Okay, right there, it doesn't say you can't. It just says, if you judge, you'll be judged back. If you're okay with that, then, then roll with it, okay? But there's no prohibition that says you can't, okay? That's the first problem. Many people think we can't. There's nothing in here that says you can't. It says, do not judge or, or you too will be judged. But it doesn't say you can't, okay? But then, even then, they just stop there. They don't continue reading. So what is the context of Matthew 7? Let's keep reading. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you again. This goes back to Luke 6.38. So this is a continuation. Both Luke and John are both kind of saying the same thing here. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? See, Jesus is talking about hypocritical judging. You judge others and yet you don't judge and correct yourself. Okay, so Jesus is talking about hypocrisy here. Let's continue reading. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. Again, Jesus is saying it right here. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. You see that? Take the speck out of your eye first, and then you can see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So what's the point? At the end of this narrative here, both people no longer have a speck in their eyes. Both people can now see clearly, and both don't have a speck in their eyes. So the first person judged himself, and he corrected himself, and then he helped his brother and helped corrected him. So at the end of the story, both people can now see correctly. You see? And that's the point. At the end of the day, saints, we are not supposed to continue to have a speck in our eye. See, judge not, or lest thou be judged, is not a verse to say we're not supposed to judge people, and people can live any kind of way, and they can do anything they want, and they can keep living in sin, and they can keep doing any, anything they want, and we as the church, or we as pastors and leaders have no right to say anything because we're not allowed to judge people. Saints, that it's not the context. First of all, it says, judge not, lest thou be judged. It doesn't mean that we can't. Number two, the context there is hypocritical judging. So take the speck out of your eye so you can see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's. So at the end of the day, both of you now can see clearly because both of you don't have a speck in your eye. And that's the point, to live saved, to live holy, to live righteous before our God. So that we're supposed to do that. And a great example of that is 1 Corinthians chapter 5. For the sake of time, I'm just going to paraphrase it. The Apostle Paul is writing to the Corinthian church because there was a guy who was in sexual sin in the church, 1 Corinthians 5. So in his letter, not only does Paul rebuke the guy for being in sexual sin, but then he also rebukes the church for not rebuking it. Did you catch that? He, rebu he rebukes the church for the church not doing anything about it. So not only does the guy get rebuked, but the church gets rebuked for not rebuking him as well. Okay? And, and before Paul says that, he says, even though I'm not physically with you, he says, but I have already judged in spirit. So here you have an apostle judging the sin and then appropriately making his judgment of what to do about it because of the sin. Saints, that is what we're supposed to do. And let me just close this video by saying this. If you're a pastor right now, and if you see, blatantly see sin, and if you know something is wrong, 
and you are not confronting it, pastor, you are in dereliction of duty. And if you don't repent for that, and you know other people that don't repent, especially if you're just trying to grow a big church and you're just so concerned about the numbers than you are about the character and holiness of the people of God, you just want to have a big church for the sake of having a big church instead of actually growing and discipling the people of God, even after this video, pastor, if you don't repent, well, first of all, I ask that you repent. If you don't repent, then I ask you to do this. Do, the, do a favor to the body of Christ and resign immediately. Okay? If you're not willing to do your job and rebuke sin and confront sin in love and deal with people to make people be accountable so they can grow in Christ, especially if you're doing it because you just want a big church, because you just want the numbers, then pastor, church leader, whoever you are, repent today. And if you're not willing to repent, then again, do the body, do the body of Christ a favor and resign effective immediately. At the very least, for dereliction of duty. You need to resign for dereliction of duty. Because again, the Apostle Paul dealt with sin. He rebuked the Corinthians. And he rebuked the Corinthian church for not dealing with somebody else's sin. Pastor, you're not off the hook. Paul also told Timothy, the word of God is good for correction, for rebuke, for reproving, and for teaching. So you got to use the word of God to do all those things. If you're not willing to do those things, Pastor, you need to resign effective immediately. Again, because of your dereliction of duty. Now, so with all that being said, Matthew 7, it's probably not what you think it is. Matthew 7 doesn't say we can't judge. We can judge. It just says when you judge, you're going to be judged back. But as church leaders, especially as church leaders, we got to be okay with that, number one. And number two, the context there is hypocritical judging. Okay? So we're allowed to do it. And as, as a church leader, pastors, church leaders, you're commanded by God to do it. You have to do it. So that's the context of Matthew 7. It doesn't say we can't judge. Saints, yes, we can. With that, it's a lot to chew on, so I'm going to let you chew on that. Until next time, God bless.